It is also in our agenda to add to our present curriculum in the not too distant future to produce skills artisans, craftsmen, technicians, technologists for both the formal and informal sector to meet the industrial demands in these areas. ITOC is backed by the Central College of Nottingham and the support it provides to its partners institute is said to have contributed to the meeting of set targets. The Gambia is a country that is strong, passionate and proud and ITOG is a college that captures the essence of its people and builds on these values. Whenever I meet an ITOG student, and there are many of you here today, the students are respectful and polite in nature, but also intelligent, determined, passionate, resolute and driven to achieve. And I salute you for this. Adam Oba, board chairman of ITOG, sound to inspire the graduates by quoting the late Nelson Mandela, saying he was trying to get them to always think positively. You got to remember that nothing in this world is impossible. And Mandela makes sure to remind us of that, he said. It always seems impossible until it is done. Two, a lot of people find it easy to be pessimistic and think of the negatives they can arise out of a, that can arise out of a situation. The more positive you think, the more positive the outcome will probably be. And his quote to that is, I am fundamentally an optimist. Whether that comes from nature or nurtured, I cannot say. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's heart pointed towards the sun. Its mission accomplished and the Institute for Travel and Tourism the Gambia in a bid to recognize and reward the efforts of partners that help produce yet another batch of graduates awarded them certificates. Outstanding students were also honored with certificates recognizing their achievements. The 108 graduates have now moved a step forward and it's hoped that once they get jobs, the skills they accumulated during the study program would come in handy and help surpass gains made in the tourism industry in particular. Rohi Bitei, GRTS News. The Gambia Armed Forces hereby informs the general public that it would conduct a series of love firing exercises for recruit intake 33B at the Lance Cabral Bojans Range in Brikama from Friday 13 to Saturday 14 to December 2013 starting at 7 a.m. The general public, especially residents living around the range in Brikama and its satellite villages are urged to avoid the designated area on the above mentioned dates. We now go with our first break. When we come back, the news continues. World leaders, among them current U.S. President Barack Obama and the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, have attended the memorial services for the late South African President Nelson Mandela. In a highly symbolic speech honoring the life of the iconic figure, America's first black president paid glowing tribute to, Mande to Mandela, describing his legacy as an example for the rest of mankind. Here is an excerpt. For a giant of history who moved a nation toward justice and in the process moved billions around the world. Born during World War I, far from the corridors of power, a boy raised herding cattle and tutored by the elders of his Dembu tribe. Madiba would emerge as the last great liberator of the 20th century. Like Gandhi, he would lead a resistance movement 
justice. He would endure a brutal imprisonment that began in the time of Kennedy and Khrushchev and reached the final days of the Cold War. Emerging from prison without the force of arms, he would, like Abraham Lincoln, hold his country together when it threatened to break apart. And like America's founding fathers, he would erect a constitutional order to preserve commitment to democracy and rule of law, ratified not only by his election, but by his willingness to step down from power after only one term. Given the sweep of his life, the scope of his accomplishments, the adoration that he so rightly earned, it's tempting, I think, to remember Nelson Mandela as an icon, smiling and serene, detached from the tawdry affairs of lesser men. But Madiba himself strongly resisted such a lifeless portrait. Instead, Madiba insisted on sharing with us his doubts and his fears, his milk miscalculations, along with his victories. I am not a saint, he said, unless you think of a saint as a sinner who keeps on trying. And it was precisely because he could admit to imperfection. President Barack Obama there leading tributes to the late Nelson Mandela. More than 100 leaders attended the memorial ceremonies, and there were historic meetings, not least the symbolic embrace between Madiba's ex-wife, Winnie Mandela, and widow Grasa Marcel, as well as the historic handshake between the U.S. President and Cuban leader, Raul Castro. We have details in this report. The South African national anthem rang out in the five official languages of the country Tuesday as a final homage was given to global icon Nelson Mandela, who died last Thursday at the age of 95. Driving rain kept the 95,000-seat Soccer City Stadium in Soweto from full capacity, but the turnout was impressive. 100 world leaders and 80,000 South Africans attended, while millions around the world watched the vibrant tribute. He sacrificed so much and was willing to give up everything here for freedom and equality. We stand proud of you, Matiba, who represents the best Pan-African values of freedom, solidarity, service to the people, equality, sacrifice, and defense of the human dignity. Mandela's entire family attended the memorial service. Former wife Winnie Mandela and last wife Gracia Machel exchanged an embrace. Current South African president Jacob Zuma attended and received a few boos from the crowd. Unlike U.S. President Barack Obama, who received rousing applause. There are too many people who happily embrace Madiba's legacy of racial reconciliation, but passionately resist even modest reforms that would challenge chronic poverty and growing inequality. Among the notable moments of the ceremony was a long handshake between the American and Cuban leaders. That just shows that Mandela's legacy lives on. carnage in the Central African Republic is spiraling out of control. Rival gangs belonging to Christian and Muslim groups have been engaged in another run of sectarian violence. Meanwhile, meantime, France has confirmed that two of its soldiers have been killed by unknown gunmen during overnight classes in Bongi. We have details of that story in the CFI report. The scene in Bongi is exploding. 